Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is my most favorite video of the year to film and that is the video where I get to gush about all of my favorite books of the previous year. Yes guys, it is my best books of 2023. I cannot believe that 2023 has come and gone and we now have a new set of books for me to read, rave, and gush about for you guys. And let me just tell you friends, there are some really good books on the list this year. Granted, it was a little hard for me to get 10 books. I won't say it was hard for me to narrow. Sometimes it was hard for me to find 10, but I ended up finding 10 to 12 incredible books that I cannot wait to talk to you guys about. So let me tell you a little bit about how I do my best books of the year. I don't just go by the numbered rating. I don't sort my spreadsheet sheet and go, okay, well, this got the highest rating, so it's number one. Really, my best books of the year is books that have stuck with me, books that like got in my crawl and made me love reading them and just really like have grabbed me by the throat and not let go. And so some of these you will see are honorable mentions that you would have thought would have been on my best of the year. Some of them were four stars, but they just stuck with me so much, which probably means I need to get better about giving five stars. And I'm aware of that. I'm going to be working on that. I just, these are the best books. These are the ones that did not let go of me that I always want to recommend the first things on my brain, the things that live rent free inside my brain. I guess let's just jump in first to the honorable mentions. I do have two of these. So I did try not to repeat authors or put multiple books on a series on this list. However, I do cheat just a little bit because a couple of these are full series because I couldn't just pick one book and I read the whole series this year. So it counts. But we do have two honorable mentions that we need to talk about. The first one is an indie that I read at the very beginning of the year and that is a shade of Madness by Chiaga Abdallah. This is an epic fantasy that just drops you in and you are along for a wild ride. It is multi-perspective with blood magic and griffins and almost like magical like zombies, empathy magic. It is just so cool and so much fun. I had a great time with A Touch of Light and really loved Shades of Madness as well. It is so good and I highly recommend the series. Then we also have Mary by Nat Cassidy and this is going to be the only repeat author on this list but I just could not go the entire list without talking about Mary because while it was a four star read for me and I definitely don't think that it was perfect this book has just as the southerners say gotten in my crawl like I just cannot forget about this book it is weird it is wacky it is unhinged and the ending goes off the rails in the best way possible it's following a woman who just believes that something isn't right she keeps getting told that she's going through menopause and she's just gonna have to suck it up turns out she's seeing ghosts and other things are going on but I don't really want to tell you any more about it because I think that not having any clue what this book is about is one of the best ways to experience it. So those are the only two honorable mentions that I have for you guys. So I guess let's just jump into the top 10 books of the year. For the most part, I did try to number these from number 10 to number one. There are a couple that could be shifted around a little bit depending on my mood, but I really tried to solidify what I felt like was the best book of the year. So coming in at number 10 is Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman. This book was so unique and just really surprised me. I read this for 72 hours in the haunted house and it is a grief and addiction horror that again is kind of unhinged. You're going to see that that is a theme for things that I like in horror. Things that make you uncomfortable. This book definitely succeeds in making you very uncomfortable. It has a scene in an office that just like I, I was listening to it and my jaw literally dropped. This is about a pill that will let you see the dead and has a lot of consequences. I definitely recommend this if you're looking for something a little weird and a little dark. Coming in at at number nine is a book that shocked me. You guys, I don't know that I've actually talked about this book in a video yet because it was for the Goodreads Choice Awards, but it didn't make it into the top 10. And so I didn't include it in the vlog. But like this book just completely shocked me. I read it in two days and was absolutely obsessed with The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This book has death magic. It has banter. It has a love triangle, tons of angst, slow burn romance, portly politics. It was just everything that I could have asked for in the moment. I had a great time with this while I was reading it. And so I just felt like it needed to go on this list. This is probably the only one on this list, however, that I'm not just sitting here going here, read it. You should read it because I'm a little scared that nobody is going to like this book. You know, when you're thinking about recommending a book and you think about books that you love and you go, am I the weird one? Am I the only one that's going to like this? Is there something wrong with me? This is the book for me, but I had a great time with it. And I just, 
I'm so excited for the sequel. I loved these characters and their relationships. And again, I thought the magic system was really, really good. So I'm gonna recommend it, but not recommend it all at the same time. And I, I had problems with it. There were some logic issues for me. It's definitely leans more on the young adult side of romanticy, but I had a great time with it. Coming in at number eight is The Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. This again is the only repeat author on this list, but I just had to put them both on here. Nat Cassidy does such an incredible job with atmosphere. And I feel like this one definitely condensed down some of the issues that I had with Mary, which was mostly just the pacing and it being a little bit too long and drug out. This was not. It was occasionally a little slow, but yet I was never bored and not wanting to read because you just could not figure out what was going on. And it was so intriguing. I think that he does a really good job of pulling in some of his own world experiences without making it feel like he's writing about himself. Sometimes that's kind of hard to do. This is Rosemary's Baby meets Lock Every Door meets Salem's Lot. And and it's a great time. I absolutely loved it. I felt like it was a unique take on motherhood that I could more relate to. And it was creepy, like a cockroach scene. Ugh. And it's just, it's incredible. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. Number seven is The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. I don't have this book yet. I really, really need to purchase it. But it's one of those that I didn't have and I read and I just have a problem where I don't want to buy books that I've already read. But I do need to buy this one because I absolutely loved it. This is one of the first books that I read this year. It was on Cassidy's Best of the Year list last year, which is why I read it this year. And I have zero regrets. Rage of Dragons, I really enjoyed, but it was a little bit too breakneck speed for me. And I wanted to get to know the characters in the magic system a little bit better. And Fires of Vengeance did that for me. It is a matriarchal system. It has really cool magic where the women can enrage the men. It is a revenge plot. There are dragons. It is a non-Western setting and it, it literally has it all. It's so, so good. If you have not picked up Rage of Dragons, I highly recommend it. I'm hoping Hoping that he is able to continue writing the series. There are only two books out currently, but I think there's supposed to be at least four. And I'm hoping that book three comes out very soon. I cannot wait. It has a title and there's currently a release date on Goodreads, but I don't think it's accurate. And I just, I need it in my life so badly. Coming in at number six is the classic case of I can like anything if it's done well. And that is Blood Mercy by Bella Roth. This book has so many anti-Mel buzzwords that are probably buzzwords for other people. It is very slow. It has a sweet relationship. It has a cinnamon roll lead main character. It has Bridgerton-like courtly politics, but it also has an incredible world building, great character development, an animal companion, so many good things to love about this book. It is very slow. It does have a semi-formal writing style, so I do recommend the audiobooks for these, but I ate this up. I think that in the beginning I was pleasantly surprised, but by the end I could not believe how much character development, how much world building that we had gone through throughout out this book and I just could not recommend this first one enough. I have tabbed it. I cannot wait to meet Bill Roth at a Polycon in April. This is also a vampire romantic, but the Hespertine are not your average vampires. I loved what she was able to do with this. I think again that the politics are really, really good. I just highly recommend. Next up is one that I'm a basic girly. I'm just gonna join the hype train and I'm okay with that because this book was really, really good and it has crack in the pages and it was just so much fun. It probably could move up the list just a little bit depending on what mood I'm in, but that is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. This book took the internet by storm. I don't know very many people that haven't at least tried it even if they didn't like it because the hype was so high. Sorry for the weird lighting. This thing is super, super shiny. But I figure you probably already know what Fourth Wing is about. It is a disabled female main character, shadow magic, enemies to lovers, dragons, school setting. It it has so many good things. And I just feel like this book was so compulsory. Like I could not put it down. Once I started reading it, got past a little bit of the YA tropiness in the beginning. I was hooked. It had grabbed me. It got its claws in me. And I absolutely loved every second with this. I liked the sequel a lot and I cannot wait for the third book in the series. But this first one, chef's kiss. Coming up next starts kind of our series that I want to talk about because I did read the entire series this year and so I feel like I can just include all of them. But I will tell you which ones out of the series were my favorite. The first is Eska or the War of Turtles series by Rob J. Hayes. I feel like everybody just kind of calls this the Eska series because that's what it is. This whole series front and center is Eska. She is the reason to read this series. It also has an incredible magic system that is really unique. If you are attuned to magic, it's gonna kill you, but it'll kill you a little slower and if you're not attuned to the magic, it's going to kill you outright. It's just such a unique system. But not only that, this has a great relationship, great quote unquote friendship in it that I 
you just it was completely enamored by I loved it so much like I can't really tell you that much about it but just know that I would die for Eska and the companion but I don't want to spoil it by telling you the companion but I would die for them they are incredible my favorite book in the series I think is from Cold Ashes Risen which is the third book in the series this does have two arcs so you've got the first arc that is three books and then you have a second arc that's set 30 years in the future I believe that is a second arc I enjoyed both of them quite a lot but do prefer the first one and I just I cannot recommend this series enough it is a self-published fantasy you need to go get it what are you waiting on go get this book okay so for second and third place I thought that I was pretty set like I was like I know I know what's going to be second place I know it's going to be third place I'm, I'm sure I'm confident and as I'm sitting here looking at them I'm no longer confident I loved both of these series so much for very different reasons the first one that I will talk about though and tentatively put in third place is the Crowns of Nyaxia series by Carissa Broadbent starting with The Serpent in the Wings of Night. I this series Araya and Rain live in my head rent-free at all times like they are my favorite romanticy couple that I have read about in the not so distant past. I think that this book does so many things incredibly well. It lets us get to know our strong badass female main character before introducing the guy. Their relationship is slow burned enough that it did not feel forced. They had great banter. They had great chemistry. There is a competition element that I really really enjoyed in this. I think it has great world building and great magic and I just I adored this series and I cannot recommend it enough. I think that if you made me pick, I would say Serpent. I liked slightly better than Ashes, but they're both incredible in very different ways. Serpent is a little more fast paced. Ashes really slows down and focuses on the mental health and the repercussions of things that happened in Serpent. So they do have different vibes, but I do think are both absolutely incredible. And I, I cannot recommend this series enough. Like I just, I truly can't. It's amazing. You need to pick it up. If you are a romanticy girly and you have not read this, series yet. What is wrong with you? Pick it up right now. Don't wait a second longer. And coming in at number two is the Aurelian Cycle or Fireborn series by Rosie Aramunda. This is one that Cassidy encouraged me to read this year. I have been hearing about this for years. I think the first place that I heard about it was on Elliot Brooks channel like two or three years ago when it had the cover change and I thought eh, that sounds good but like I wasn't overly interested in it until this year and I could not have been more surprised by this series. It is absolutely incredible. It is a young adult series which I think was the main reason that I was sort of avoiding it is because I didn't think I really liked young adult anymore and for the most part that still leans to be true that I don't tend to like as much young adult but this book just does what it does so incredibly well there's a great like relationship in here that is extremely slow burn and kind of angsty but there's also some really good friendships in here there are animal companions the dragons and their writers are just ugh, they're so good they're so good and this series the series will rip your heart out, chew it up, spit it back out, let you take it, think you're safe, and then chew it up again. It's just incredible. It, it will literally pull at your heartstrings, make you feel all of the things. I was stressed reading these books. But I think that Rosie Armanda does such an incredible job at making you see two different sides of the story. This has a rebellion, a revolution in it that you can kind of see why people would feel each way. Like it doesn't feel like there is a definitively right and a definitively wrong. There's obviously a right, but you know how a lot of times it's just very clear which one is the right side. She definitely does an amazing job at kind of blurring those lines and really making me feel for characters that are on both ends. And it's just so good. It's so good. So if you've been like me and waiting to pick up this series, I highly recommend that you wait no longer. You have all three on hand because you will be dying to binge these. And last but not least, come Coming in at first place, you're probably wondering, Mel, where is the will of the many? Actually, you're probably not wondering, Mel, where is the will of the many? You probably already know that it is my number one book of the year. This book is incredible. 10 out of 10. Chef's kiss. Amazing. Can't stop thinking about it. Can't stop raving about it. Can't stop recommending this book. Good. This is one of the two authors actually that I think are going to have a book on my best of the year and a book on my worst of the year. But like, can you believe that this is the number one book of the year for me? No, not me. I'm shocked. I read the uh, Shadow of What Was Lost at the beginning of the year for the Backlist Book Club and did not like it. And so I drug my feet so much picking up this book until somebody that I trusted had already read it. I think it was Aaron from Booked and Busy read it, then Cassidy read it, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll pick it up. Oh my goodness, did he correct the things that I had problems with in The Shadow of What Was Lost? Because this book is incredible. It has amazing characters and character development. We've got a really cool magic system. The world felt so very vivid. The friendships were 
were amazing. Like I would die for Kalidas and Eden. I feel like they're just such incredible characters and supporting characters. It's got a super twisty ending that is a cliffhanger and I cannot wait for book two. I cannot believe I had to wait for book two. This is so good. Highly, highly recommend number one book of the year incredible. So there you have it guys. Those are my top 10 and two honorable mention books of the year. I think I had an incredible reading year. Even though I had a lot of three stars this year, I had some amazing books that I got the privilege of reading and talking to you guys about. Oh, these are so good. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite book of the year was. Have you read any of these? Were they also on your list? I cannot wait to find out. I love the comment section of these videos as well because I always get so many good book recommendations. Amazing. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!